The war in Ukraine has now been raging on for the last one month. It's a war that everyone thought, given the power differential between Russia and Ukraine, that would be over in 48, maximum 72 hours. And yet it has gone on for one full month. This is when it starts. It starts on February 24th. It's the start of an event that will shake the world. This is when Russia launches a full-scale attack on Ukraine, battering city after city. The escalation as power as far as the airstrikes are concerned come a little later but that's February 24th is when it starts. Then on February 28th there's a, there is round one of the ceasefire talks at the Belarus border. It do, doesn't lead to anywhere but subsequent talks do lead to uh, some humanitarian corridors being created. Then on 1st March something that the world watches very closely a 64 kilometer long Russian convoy uh, with armored vehicles uh, with tanks is seen on the outskirts of Kiev slowly making its way to Kiev. It takes a terribly long time to get there and what this convoy has essentially done is encircle Kiev. Kiev has come under heavy bombardment in the last few days. On March 3rd, Ukraine confirms Russia's capture of Kherson. Uh, after Chernobyl, Kherson, the second big place to fall. Then on March 8th, the big sanctions kick in. The world finally acts. There's a ban on imports, US imports of Russian oil and gas, something that is meant to handicap the Russian economy, and it does. What happens on March 11th next is that Russia calls for a ceasefire so that civilians may leave. Uh, the ceasefire doesn't work immediately, but it does, and people are in a position to leave. Almost 35 lakh people have now left uh, Ukraine. Many of them were Indian students, all of them back home now, except one who was killed in the firing. On March 18th, Russia uses hypersonic missiles to destroy a weapons storage site. This is really an escalation of, of what we are seeing. Then Ukraine, refusing to give in, rejects a Russian ultimatum to surrender in Mariupol. Mariupol completely decimated, flattened, but the Ukrainians are refusing to put their arms there, put in their arms there. Now, as we said, more than 35 lakh people, which means 3.5 million people, have already fled Ukraine since the start of the invasion. So this is a massive refugee crisis, one of the biggest in the world that is playing out as well. March 23rd, Kremlin says Russia will use nukes if its existence is threatened. And not just nukes, they are also talking about biological weapons. Uh, they are talking about chemical weapons. Now, is this Russia ratcheting up the rhetoric? We don't know, but that is something that the NATO huddle, which begins today is going to consider very closely.